Matt Gelio is on the line with us this morning. He's the principal of the Marion Center High School. And uh, normally when we talk with Matt, uh, especially during this year, it's it's all about COVID and how the school itself is dealing with it within the school hallways. He can't tell us. And do you know why? Matt, tell us why. <laughs> well, I'm, I've been in quarantine since November 10th. You've been, you've been quarantined since when? November 10th. November the 10th. By the way, our conversation brought to you by Marcus and Mac, a law firm representing injured people. So you can serve sort of as a test case for us here today and, and describe the experience. That, that must feel ex- extremely disconnected for you to be away from your school. I, I am. I'm trying to keep up with attending Zoom meetings and, and emails and those types of things, but I feel like I'm, I'm so far behind of what's happening, and i got to really hand it to Mr. Weimer and Mrs. Gaston and my dean student, Scott Peterson, really picking it up in my absence as far as, you know, planning for remote. The school went remote when I was out. Last I was there, they were, you know, still in the hybrid model, but then they decided to go remote, and they've been putting a plan in place um, ever since, and I really have to hand it to them and thank them for, for everything they've done. Yeah, boy, boy, the phone connection isn't very good. Evidently, you got a uh, a quarantine oh, phone too. <laughs> um, Are you there now? Hey, that's that's a little bit better. That's a okay. Little bit better. I'll, I'll try this. All right, so so here we go. So uh, the the high school itself now is is fully remote, and, and that decision was made. Uh, what well, was last last week, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. They decided to go fully remote. Um, you know, the, the numbers in Indiana County are not good as far as um, that goes. And we had some positive cases, I believe, and, and they just decided I think it was the safest route to, to go remote, to be cautious and proactive in it. Um, so, you know, that's, that's kind of where, where the high school's at right now. Yeah. And from your standpoint, uh, did you actually get sick, Matt? Well, what happened was my son got quarantined and was, I, I believe he was asymptomatic because he didn't show any signs. Mm-hmm. Which that didn't really affect the rest of the family. If he was he was a contact, we were contacts of a contact, is what they say. So it didn't affect us at that point. Then my daughter got sick, and we had to take her in because she was exhibiting all kinds of symptoms. She got tested positive. Well, then that affected my wife and I. My my son had extended his quarantine because now she has to serve her ten ten days. And because my wife and I are caregivers to her, we had to do additional days on the, my daughter's 10 because we could theoretically test positive at the end of her um, quarantine time. Yeah. So it's like an ongoing revolving door, you know, and I was terrified of, okay, my son gets sick now and tests positive or something. Boy, that just extends everything. And it really gives you an idea of uh, how – the web connects, doesn't it? Uh, that uh, you you don't know who your children have been in touch with and who those folks have been in touch with. It, it really is a difficult thing. And right, and I know you know from from my personal standpoint, it affected two school districts in in a big way. Um, you know, with the the contact tracing and the you know my absence as a high school principal in this time of crisis. You know, and then all their contact tracing at their school. You know, it affected everybody. Yeah, it's it's just amazing, and and so that's why I said you could serve as sort of a, a test case for us to uh, describe what that experience is like. So you yeah, do it is not, not fun. Not fun. No, no. Uh, of all the all the adjectives that you could use, fun would not be one of them, would it? No, absolutely not. Yeah. Well, uh, that being the case, uh, you uh, still. Uh, in your remote capacity as the principal, and, uh, I guess you're back on an even footing with everybody else who's remote uh, from the school right now as well. Uh, and and so you do have the opportunity to, uh, or or we have the opportunity to sort of pick your brain about what it's like to do this remotely with the students and uh, and, and how you are. A, we we had these reports today about um, uh, students dealing with um, um, the gain of weight uh, from uh, snacking while they're. <laughs> While they're learning, uh, you know, some of these you get that, side effects. You get... I didn't sorry. know what you were getting at there, Todd. This, well, the side effects of, of, oh, okay. of the pandemic and, and of remote learning, uh, they are something that has to be dealt with as well. Oh, I, you know, absolutely. And, and being in remote learning is so isolating. And obviously, quarantine lends itself to isolation. But, um, you know, whether you're logged into the computer or not, 
you feel like you're missing things. You're just, dis- you feel disconnected all the time because you can't go and talk to someone or you can't just, you know, have a, have a casual conversation and, and, you know, you feel like you're missing things all the time. Um, and that's just the nature of it. You feel kind of, um, uneasy all the time. And I did have some, you know, some issues logging into zoom a couple of times. And, you know, obviously my phone connection here is not great. You know, those types of issues come up and, and obviously from a student standpoint, it gives me a good perspective on what they're going through, especially in an area where they could have low connectivity or, you know, bad connectivity. Yeah. I guess multiply your experience by a couple of hundred students and, uh, that puts, and, and yeah, plus eight courses a day. Yeah, I mean that's just that's tough. Yeah, it, it's and to pull it off is a pretty amazing thing. Our school districts seem to be doing that. Now we heard from Purchase Line a, a week or so ago that uh, they feel that they've learned enough lessons through all of this that uh, they really don't have the need for snow days anymore, which would be an interesting side effect of all of this as well. Um, uh, but uh, it really does change the whole mindset of how you plan a school year, doesn't it? Absolutely. And, you know, it's just kind of trial by fire. There's no playbook on all this. Um, so, you know, we're, we're going and we're putting the best structures in place. And, you know, th- there are unintended consequences that we haven't seen, but we're learning and working through. So we are getting better at what we're doing. I think the struggle right now is to find consistency in one model mm-hmm. because we flip back and forth from in-person learning to hybrid learning to remote learning to hybrid learning. And that inconsistency is difficult for staff and students to, to keep switching modes. Yeah, I would guess that there are going to be a bunch of meetings over the course of the next two or three years between folks from your school district and other school districts trying to get together and say, what worked for us, what didn't work, what about you, what's your experience? And maybe we can come up with some sort of uh, consensus on how to approach situation such as this because i don't guess that this is going to be the last time we have to deal with something like this no i don't think so either i think that it was a difficult way to learn um however without this kind of a crisis pushing us into it i don't know that we would ever have gotten to this level so you know yeah obviously we've gotten better at what we do it's just a matter of now fine-tuning and trying to find consistency so that everybody thrives from this this is a very tough change yeah, there are certain foundational things that you know are going to have to be solid in the future. Of course, uh, the the number one thing is going to be the broadband issue, uh, and that connectivity is going to be so key for everybody. But then keeping up with the technology is something else uh, that is going to have to uh, – It's I think school business managers are going to be constantly having to open up some new avenue of, of funding – uh, in order to make sure that uh, it's not only you have the equipment in place now, but it's kept up to date. There are always updates that have to be made. No, absolutely, and the uh, um, technology is exponential. I mean, it's it's growing faster than, you know, it's more than doubling in a year, and it's it's difficult to keep that up. We have it on a rotation cycle, but like you said, that cycle is always moving. Yeah. All right, so Marion Center is uh, high school fully remote for now and uh, into the month of December. Uh, of course, that affects the athletics. Uh, the winter sports schedules are going to be delayed as well, I believe. Uh, Marion Center is on a December 7th schedule, correct? Right. We're going to reevaluate our situation on the 4th. Oh, that's right. To decide, right. Yeah, yeah, to decide whether to go back on the 7th or not. Uh, the difficult thing right now is, you know, we have to practice 15 days before we can have a competition. And um, hopefully other schools will follow suit so that um, schools that are on schedule right now won't have a schedule anyways because we're delaying. A lot of schools are delaying. So plus the crossover to Laurel Highlands and those types of things in our swimming. Yeah. So, um, you know, obviously the, the, the district, we're going to put some feelers out. I know I talked to Jody, the Heritage Conference president, Jody Rainey, um, and we're going to put some feelers out to find out what – what the general consensus is out there um, as far as what the future holds for winter sports. Yeah. Um, if it's December 7th and that is the last date on which practices begin, well, that puts you into Christmas week before there's any actual competitions. Right. Yeah, right. It pretty much um, scraps um, the December schedule. Yeah. Then we'll start in January pretty much. Yeah. And, and so we'll just have to wait and see because uh, the information changes every day. Uh, and I know for you it's an anxious time uh, as a school principal. 
there's that those added things but those are extracurriculars and we understand that in the list of priorities the education of the kids the health and the safety of the kids is number one absolutely terrific well matt i hope everything works out for you and your family through through all of this and for the school district as well I want to thank you for second taking some time out of your day to visit with us today hey thanks todd and i'm anxious to get back so i bet you i bet you have a wonderful day today all right thank you all right, bye-bye you too bye. There is Matt Joeo. He is the principal at the Marion Center High School.